If your Serato library feels overwhelming every time you open it, this video will help you. What's going on people, my name's CB and I've spent the past seven years perfecting Serato libraries and now I help DJs organize their music libraries faster than ever. So the first step to clean and organize your music library is putting everything inside a central location. When you first start DJing and you get a batch of music, the first thing you wanna do is just chuck it inside Serato and start DJing from it. That is probably one of the worst things you can do because you're gonna throw all this music inside Serato and feel so overwhelmed. When I first started DJing seven years ago, I got given a music library of 10,000 tracks and getting given all this music, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be the best DJ out there. I've got so much music to choose from, but little did I know it was probably one of the worst things that happened to me because I had all this DJ's music and I was like, I don't even know how to organize it, how to play it, like it was just too much for me. So I threw it inside Serato and I was so overwhelmed. I didn't know where anything was. All the tracks were all messed up. There was duplicates, there was low quality files and it was just so overwhelming to me. What I then had to do was I had to reorganize it so I was able to actually manage it. Because when you've got too many tracks in front of you, you you do struggle to DJ and that that's me DJing at home. If I was to take that music library to a, a, a club set, I would be so stressed because if you don't have a structure inside your music library when you're DJing out in a club, you're gonna feel so stressed and to the point where you're gonna be like, I can't do this, this is too hard for me. When you get your music library, what you wanna do is try and build a kind of structure so it's easier to manage. Putting it into one folder on your laptop is probably gonna be the best thing you're gonna do and you need to have a dedicated place for it. Most DJs will download all their music and leave it in their downloads folder, put it inside Serato and then next thing you know, after about six or seven months, their downloads folder is cluttered with files, documents, finances, their music. When it comes to maybe wanting to organize or moving it to a different computer, you're gonna struggle because you don't know what's inside Serato, you don't know what you've deleted, and you may have deleted some stuff in your downloads folder, and then you've got a bunch of orange tracks inside Serato, and you're just stressed to the max. What you wanna do is have a centralized place for your music. Now, the way I have it is inside my music folder on my MacBook, I have a folder called All Music. All my music lives in here. Anything that's inside Serato lives inside here here and then inside here is split up into genres so I've got all music then I've got R&B, hip-hop, Afrobeats, dance, reggae and inside there has all my mp3s. This is just the best way to lay out your music on your laptop. It just makes things a lot easier. You know where all your music is. It's easier to transfer from one laptop to the other because if you want to move your Serato library from say laptop A to laptop B, all you've got to do is pick up your Serato folder and your music folder, take it over to the laptop and you have your Serato library replicated. So many times DJs put off buying a new laptop because they're like, I don't know where all my music is and I don't want to miss out tracks. Best Thing you can do when you're first starting out is just build a music folder, create an all music folder, and then chuck everything inside there. You don't have to put it inside the genre folders just yet, but the first thing you want to do is just make sure everything is in one centralized location. The next step into cleaning up your music library is getting rid of low quality tracks. Now, I go on about this a lot in all my videos, but it's so important. When you first start DJing, you are going to download some free versions of tracks, and they are going to be low quality tracks SoundCloud rips, Spotify rips, YouTube rips, all these rips rips are going to come off these websites and they're going to be very low quality. If you get it from YouTube, it's going to be a video compressed to audio and then the, the, the sound quality is going to be terrible. What you don't want to do is take these tracks and then play them in a club environment because it's going to sound terrible. You're going to think that you're at home, you're playing all these tracks and at home they sound fine. You're like, oh God, it sounds good. It's going to be great in a club. You take it to a club and you're like, why doesn't this sound so great? Why does it sound so quiet? Why does it sound so compressed? It's because the audio quality is terrible. When you download a track from say YouTube, YouTube or something like that, it's going to be around about 128 KBS. Now, that is a terrible, terrible sound quality for an MP3. When you download your MP3s, you want to have them at 320 KBS. That's the highest quality for MP3s. Now, when you download your music from record pools, that's going to be the sound quality that you download. It does obviously come at a price. Like a record pool is a website where you pay a monthly subscription to get access to their tracks. Now, there are multiple websites out there that you can get music from. There's the Mashup, DJ City, Franchise Record Pool, and Heavy Hits. Obviously, a lot of DJs say, oh, I don't want to pay for my music because DJs have tens of thousands of tracks. I don't have to buy each one individually. Like when I first started, when someone said to me, you got to buy your music as a DJ, I was like, what are you on about? Like songs in iTunes are 99p. If I want to have a 10,000 track music library, what, I've got to spend 10,000 pounds. And that's what I thought when I first started DJing. And I know that's how a lot of other DJs think as well. You 
have to pay a price, but it's a lot cheaper to go for a record pool. You pay £20 a month and you get access to all their tracks. It's, it's pretty much a no brainer. When you're going for your music library and when you're downloading new music, make sure that you have high quality tracks in your music library. You will thank me in the long run. To get rid of all your low quality tracks, go to Serato, bring up the bitrate column, order it by lowest to highest, and then get rid of all the tracks that are not 320 kbs. If you don't want to get rid of all the tracks, keep the ones that are 256 kbs and then delete the rest. You can delete them or move them to a hard drive, and but just use the hard drive tracks as a reference to go download the new ones. And if you can't find the higher quality tracks in the record pools, just ask a DJ, but don't ask a DJ for all their music. Just be like, so I've got this low quality of In The Club 50 Cent, do you mind sending me the higher quality version just so I can put it into my music library? It's literally something like that is so simple and it will help you clean up your music library. The next step to clean up your music library, and this is one of the big ones, is removing duplicates. A duplicate is just your track doubled in your music library, and it's just gonna take up double the space in your music library. So say, for example, you've got In The Club 50 Cent, which is at 10 megabytes, and you've got two of them. That's an extra 10 megabytes that you could be using for another track. Finding duplicates in your music library is quite difficult because doing it manually, you have to order the track by song and then go through it and then be like, oh, that's got the same name, and then doing that manually and doing anything manually with 10,000 and tracks is going to take you a long time and you're going to get halfway through not even halfway through you'll probably get a tenth of the way through and be like this is boring i'm not going to do it then you're going to keep downloading more and more music it's going to pile up build up and next thing you know you're going to run out of space and then you're going to be like I need to sort out my music library, I need to sort out my duplicates, but then it's too late. Back when I first got my music library, I had a bunch of duplicates and I wish I did sort them out sooner, but there just wasn't a solution online to remove duplicates. But now there are a bunch of free resources to remove duplicates. If you wanna check them out, check the links in the description down below. Clear up your duplicates and it will clear up space in your music library. You will be so surprised how many tracks you have in your music library that are duplicated. The next way to clean up and organize your music library is creating smart crates for each of your genres inside Serato. I always say this in every single one of my videos, genre is the most important piece of data in your music library because it's the easiest way to organize your music library. You're gonna have tens of thousands of tracks, but you're only gonna have around about 15 to 20 genres to work from. So if you organize your tracks by genre, it makes it a lot easier to organize and find your track. If you have your tracks all organized by genre, if you wanna find your reggae music, you just click reggae. If you want to find your dance music, you just press dance. If you want to find all your house music, you just press house. And it makes it a lot easier. Then once you've organized by genre, then you can filter it down and organize by subgenre. But don't go too overcomplicated with the subgenres and the super subgenres. Find your main genres in your music library and organize like that. If you go inside your browse tab inside Serato, you're going to see all the different genres inside your music library. Now, you are going to have some random ones like www this and that, you're gonna have hip, hyphen, hop, R&B, blues. What you need to do is clean these all up so you only have 20 genres inside of that browse column. So the best thing you can do is order your Serato, your entire Serato library by genre. So you have A at the top and Z at the bottom. And what you wanna do is you wanna clean up each of the genres. So you're gonna have something like Afrobeats at the top, then you might have Afrobeats without the S. Add the S and it makes it a bit more consistent. Then you wanna work down and make sure that you have Afrobeats. I'm a piano baseline so everything ordered nicely you don't have any random variations and the biggest variation you're going to see is hip-hop you're going to have hip hyphen hop hip-hop four slash rap hip-hop four slash r b you're going to see all these different variations just set it as hip-hop and move on so doing this manually is going to take a long time but it's going to be the best thing you can do with your music library now there are some automated solutions i'm going to leave some links in the description down below that will help you automate this process to make your music library organized a lot faster so once you've cleaned up all your genres you can now create all smart crates for all the different genres. So what I would say is order your entire Serato library by genre. So you're gonna have A at the top, Z at the bottom. And then for each genre, create a smart crate. So a smart crate is a playlist based on rules. So you can set a rule, genre is R&B, and it will create you a smart crate and pull in all your R&B tracks. So you're gonna have all your genres on the left-hand side. So when you're DJing, you can be like, oh, I wanna play some house music click house. Oh, I wanna play some R&B music, click R&B, and all your music's gonna be inside there. Then once you've got all your genre smart crates on the left-hand side, this is when you can start sorting out your music library even further. You can go inside your entire R&B crate and go through it one by one and be like, am I ever gonna play this track? And this is when you start to main, do some maintenance on your music library, cut some tracks out, and really tighten up your music library. Now, it's not all about having all the tracks in the world. It's about having a music library that works for you.
you. If you have too many tracks inside a crate, you're working against yourself. It's all well and good being at home, having all these tracks, but when you're in a club environment, a club set, you're under a lot of pressure. And the last thing you wanna be doing is scrolling past tracks that you know you're not gonna play. Organize your tracks by the genre, create smart crates for them, and then clean them out over time. You don't have to spend tens of hours on this a day. You can just do 20 minutes. Go inside your R&B folder, go through tracks for 20 minutes, clean them up, sort them out. And after about a month, your music library will be cleaner than ever. And then on from that, obviously you're gonna come across tracks that you don't know the genre for, or you might be on the fence about whether it's this genre or that genre. All you need to do for those tracks is just put no genre. Don't sit on a track for too long. If you sit on a track for too long, you're gonna be there, you'd be like, I don't know what this track is. This is stressing me out. Then you're gonna shut your laptop and you'd be like, I'm not doing this organizing thing. I've been there so many times. When I first started organizing my music library, I would try and sit there for hours and hours trying to figure things out and how to do things. And it would get to a point where I'd be like, I don't even wanna do this anymore. If you come across a track that you don't know the data for, just move on, but set it as no genre. And I'll tell you why setting it as no genre is so important. When you set a track as no genre, you know that that track needs sorting out. So on the left-hand side, create a new crate called to sort, and then create a smart crate with the rule, genre is no genre, and put it inside there. This is your to sort crate. So when you open your laptop, you know exactly where you need to go when you wanna sort out your music library. You go through all your genres, and you've marked some as R&B, hip hop, dancehall, but then you've also marked some as no genre. All the no genre tracks are gonna go inside that smart crate. So when you do your maintenance every day, 20 minutes, you go inside, your no genre crate, order it by number and then start from the top. Oh, what do I think this genre is? Go to Google, have a little Google and then type in the genre. So the genre for this track might be R&B. When you type in R&B, it will move it out of the no genre folder and then put it into the R&B folder. So what you'll start to see is your no genre crate start to get smaller and smaller and smaller, which will motivate you a lot more. When you start to see instant feedback of something getting smaller, then it motivates you more. So you might start to do 20 minutes, but then you might end up doing an hour because you're like, I'm on this, I'm, I love doing this. This is this cleaning up my music library, it's gonna make it a lot better. So create a no genre smart crate. When you're going through your tracks, mark them as no genre and it will just build you up a nice two sort area that you can sort out your music library. You're gonna have your main genres where it's gonna have everything that's sorted. Then you're also gonna have a sort area that you can sort every single time you open up your music library. The next step to having a clean and organized music library is to have a solid importing process when you add your music into Serato. Now, a lot of DJs just chuck their music into Serato. They'll go to their record pools, they'll get music from another DJ. Wherever it lands on their computer, they'll just drag it in. Say for example, you download a batch of music from Heavy Hits, it will go into your downloads folder, then you'll just drag it in. But then over time, that downloads folder will get bigger and bigger, get cluttered with other files. Then you might be like, oh, I need to delete my downloads because it's getting cluttered. You'll delete it. And then what will happen is the track will go orange inside Serato because when you import a track inside Serato, it stores the location where it came in from. And if you move it from where it originally came in from, Serato doesn't know where it is and you have to do the relocate lost file stuff. And it's just way too much. What you want to do is have a solid importing process. And the way I do things is I'll download my music into my downloads folder. I'll then put them tracks inside a folder with today's date. I'll move it into the auto import folder inside Serato. This will automatically pull them into Serato and create a new crate for me with the latest import. I'll then analyze all the tracks, get the BPMs, the beat grids. I'll then set all the cue points for the tracks, add a genre, add a year and add a tag for it. So say for example, this song I thought was good for girls, I'll add the girls tag. Or if I thought it was a good floor filler, I'll add floor fillers into the tag. I'll do stuff like that. And then once I've done that, I will then move all the tracks into their individual genre folders on my laptop. So like I said at the start of the video, I have an all music folder, then I have all my genres. So then inside Serato, what you can do is you can move the tracks into their genre folders inside Serato. If you do it inside Serato, you won't have the orange missing track issue. So after that, I'll put all the tracks inside their genre folders, then I'll just delete the crate. That is my importing process. It's probably the best thing that I came up with because my music library is so, so organized. Literally, when you're adding music into your music library, just have a process that you do every single time. If you leave your music in your downloads folder, that's fine, but just make sure that you know that one day 
you may have to sort out that downloads folder. Think of an importing process, it will help you out in the long run. The next step to having a clean and organized music library is just doing regular maintenance of your music library. I have mentioned about doing 20 minutes a day. So I would say, so every day, there is gonna be something that you need to organize in your music library. Unfortunately, a music library is just an ongoing thing. It's never gonna be fully, fully finished. Like I've been organizing my music library since 2018 and I'm still doing things now, but I've just figured out the best way to organize my music library, but it's just now about optimizing it best for me. You need to do regular maintenance on your music library because you need to make sure that is perfect for your DJ sets, right? So you're gonna to go to a DJ set and you're gonna be like, oh, I wish I had this crate or I wish I didn't have this many tracks in here. You go back, you optimize it. So then when you go next time, it's just a lot better for you. You'll do your daily maintenance, right? Where you're doing your, updating your genres, updating your years, or just cleaning out a few tracks from your Serato crates. But then you might do an overall maintenance that you do every six months. Like every six months, I'll go into my warm up crates, my opening crates, my main set crates, and I'll go through and I'll be like, am I gonna play this track in main set? Am I gonna play this track in warm up? Because tracks go in and out of fashion all the time, right? So a track that's main set today may be warm up in six months time, or it might just be not popular anymore and I won't play it. It's so important to do some maintenance on your music library because otherwise it's gonna build up, you're gonna have too many tracks inside your crates. So when you're DJing, you're gonna be scrolling, 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 you're gonna be stressed and you just don't need that stress when you're DJing. Some of you may be bedroom DJs and that's perfectly fine, but when you get into the clubs, you need to be ready for the pressure. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just getting you ready. Like, and this is what I do on this channel. I prepare you for the clubs and I get you ready for these club scenarios because DJing in your bedroom is easy. There's no one in front of you. There's no one to keep dancing. You can mess up as much as you want. But when you're inside these clubs, you have a time limit when you're DJing. Like each track, you're only playing for a certain amount of time and you need to keep the tracks going. And if you're doing a six hour set, a seven hour set, you have a time limit and constant pressure throughout them hours. So do some regular maintenance on your music library. Every day, do little things to improve it and then every six months do things to clean it up to make sure that it's better for you going forward. Now that was me going through all the different ways to clean and organize your music library. If you want some more Serato library videos, then I suggest that you watch this video here.